working on a good quality Scotch return to boiler part 6, fitting the water gauge and chimney housing, fitting the check valve adapter followed by cleaning the check valves. In this clip the modified water gauge is loosely screwed into the blocks. In this video I'm going to fit the water gauge properly. When fitting water gauges to model steam boilers it is essential that both of the fittings line up with each other. To do this some people use a piece of metal rod, I don't, I use the actual piece of glass that's going to be in there. More about the glass in a moment. I'd just like to show one or two close up shots of how good this type of water gauge actually is. If you notice as I'm unscrewing the top cap it has an o-ring on it so it doesn't need to be tight. This is a really nice feature and I've only ever seen it on this type of water gauge. If you look at the blanking plug on the end which allows you to poke a piece of wire through to clear lime scale should you ever need to do it, you will see that there is an extension on the end of the plug. This is designed to stop the piece of glass tube from being pushed up and blocking the inlet into the boiler. This type of water gauge could be called reassuringly expensive, they are worth every penny. To make it so that the bottom water gauge fitting was in the correct position I had to use a very thin shim washer. And in this clip I'm applying some Loctite 542 hydraulic sealant to seal the thread. And now I'm screwing it in place in the bottom fitting. The next part of the job is critical and you have to be careful. I'm using a spanner just to nip up the bottom fitting into the correct position. If any of the water gauge fittings are very difficult to turn into the correct position then you need to search through your collection of shim washers and select a thinner one. I buy packs of shim washers from Blackgates Engineering and it's always a good idea to keep a good stock. I didn't need to fit a shim washer to the top fitting because it was in the perfect position just as it was. However you do it you must make sure that the water gauge fittings line up with each other because very shortly as you can see I'm putting a glass tube through the top one and this has to fit into the bottom one. The way I do it is to hold the piece of glass tubing just outside the bottom fitting and rotate it and when it's equidistant all the way around it will fit perfectly into the bottom fitting. Take your time with this, you do not need to put any stress at all on the piece of glass tubing but get it right. The next job is to cut the piece of glass tubing to the correct length. In this next sequence, using this special tool that I bought, I'm going to show you how you do not cut a piece of glass. When using a tool like this you apply just enough pressure to score the glass, you do not do it like this. I'll show you that again in slow motion. You can see by the colour of my fingernail that I'm applying far too much pressure and literally the glass shatters. That is how not to cut a water gauge glass. I've only put the jagged piece of glass into the water gauge fitting just to show you how bad it was. And just in case you're wondering, yes, I did clean up all the pieces of broken glass off the bench. I selected a new piece of glass, marked it to the correct length, then using the water gauge cutting tool I very lightly scored around the tube, applying very little pressure, just enough to scratch a ring around the glass tube. Then all you do is simply snap the piece of glass and it breaks cleanly. Health and safety warning, wear eye protection, and wear gloves if necessary. With this water gauge came three o-rings, I only need two of them so I put one of them back into my box of o-rings. Also I removed the sharp edge of the glass on a piece of wet or dry sandpaper. For two reasons really, one being I don't want to cut the o-ring and I don't want to cut my finger either. Here's the usual procedure, push the glass tube through the top fitting and slide on the first o-ring followed by the first nut. Then screw the nut in place loosely on the top fitting, slide the bottom nut onto the glass tube, fit the second o-ring, pull the glass down into the bottom fitting and tighten the second nut. Do not under any circumstances over tighten these nuts, really they can be just finger tight normally. If you torque them up with a spanner you will break the glass. Here I'm fitting the top cap and as you can see every part of these fittings is quality. Even the top cap has an o-ring and so does the inspection plug. They really are something special. Once I replace the cap that's basically it, the water gauge is fitted. Just a gentle tweak on each of the nuts with the spanner is sufficient to make the water gauge glass steam tight. 
That's it for the water gauge, I'm sure this will be fine, I just need to replace the plugs in the blocks. But before that, I think I will fix the chimney housing in place. It fits on three studs, and originally I was going to use three brass washers and three brass nuts. Then suddenly, I remembered that I had some of these stainless steel dome head nuts. They're actually M5, but they just about fit on 2BA, provided you don't over tighten them which I didn't, as they hold the chimney housing perfectly anyway. I think the boiler's starting to look good now. It's really a pity that all this mahogany is going to move about when it gets hot, as you will see after the first steaming. In this clip I've refitted the blanking plugs with copper washers. Now it's time to fit the check valve adapter. I was going to make a new one of these, but this one is perfectly OK. What isn't OK is the state of the check valves. And also, these are Stuart check valves and use aluminium washers, which do tend to corrode away when they get old. What I'm doing here is removing the shim washers, because there seem to be far too many of them. Plus, they are a mixture of copper and aluminium washers, which is never a good combination. With the old shim washers removed, all I need to do now is drop them into the acid bath to clean them up. But instead of dropping them directly into the acid bath, I filled an aerosol cap with some acid and put them in that. I'll remove the check valves from the acid after about 24 hours when hopefully they should be a bit cleaner than they currently are, inside and out. And that's it for this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.